Six from around the world by showcasing their professions, passions, and perspectives. I'm your host, Mathir Singh, aka the Net Man. Why Guruji Ka Khalsa? Why Guruji Ki Fateh? Coach Romy Gill. Welcome to the Netnihangs Arena. Thank you for having me on your <laughs> show. Yeah, no, I'm really excited to talk to you. Uh, just to give a little background of how I found you. I found you on Instagram. I was following some other people, Sick Muscle and some of these other ones. And yeah. you showed up. So I started following you. Okay. And I found you very fascinating. I love everything you're doing. Um yeah. And I can't wait to get, dig in into your entire career, bodybuilding, powerlifting, strong, strong man, gym owner, everything. So <laughs> looking um, forward to it. Yeah. So why don't you do this? Give us a little bit of background about yourself. Where were you born? When did you get into these things? What was your background? What was by did you go to school for a different profession, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. So I was born in Punjab and then moved to Canada, I live in Surrey, British Columbia, on the West Coast. So been here uh, since I moved here at 17. And then um, when it was, was back that? in school. When was that? In 97. Uh, 97. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's been over 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So I um, went to high school here for grade 12, spent a year. Then I went to college, uh, went for computer programming. So my background was IT and uh, network security and um, 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 so all everything related to computer databases. Then I did some jobs computer related because in our community, computer engineering is better job and gym guy is like a nothing job. <laughs> you know, it's funny you're so, saying that because <laughs> I was the same way. I actually went to school. I wanted to do sports medicine. Okay. Um, and I realized I'm not going to be able to study for medical school. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so then um, I, I, did human nutrition as a under okay. a pre-medical degree. Um, yeah. And then I, I was um, doing that. And then I okay. switched to computer science. And then okay. I, I, before I finished the computer science degree, I actually got a job in IT. I was an IT engineer. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I did that same kind of thing, database design and building database world work, yeah. worldwide uh, system. And yeah. in 2003, I got laid off. And I got into real estate. So now I, I'm a real estate broker and investor now. That's what I do oh, now that's great. since 2003. But yeah, very similar. Uh, yeah, similar journey. Yeah, yeah similar journey. So, yeah, so with me, with me, I was going to college. Then I got a job. I was also designing websites like you yeah. did before. Yeah. And because um, that was exciting, easier to get jobs and money was good too. Um, so I got a full-time job while I was in school. So then I switched my school to part-time. Hmm. Um, didn't finish school because I'm like, I got the job. Why bother finishing? <laughs> yeah. yep. It was like, I finished my last project. I did the coding. I got the website running and uh, my report wasn't good. So because of the report, I got lazy finishing it the second time. Then, hmm. then I let it go. I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> Yeah, you're already and making uh, money. <laughs> as long as I'm earning money, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So from that point, um, I mean, with computer science, as you know, everything can be learned on your own. You don't yeah. need official paper that says, right. Um, bodybuilding was my hobby from beginning. When I was in high school, I would work graveyard shifts because, you know, immigrants, we all have to work hard. Mm. Uh, I would go to school, high school in the daytime. Nighttime, I had some graveyard shifts. I would work in a... Uh, it's like a 7-Eleven type of store called Max in Canada. Yeah, 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 Max. We've been to those in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I worked there and, um, you know, you look at car magazines, other magazines. After that, you get bored. You got to pass time. So I picked up this big muscle guy on the on the shelf. I'm like, oh, this looks exciting because my childhood hero was He-Man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he had muscle growing up in India. We didn't have much. So that was what I used to look. I'm like, wow, these guys look like him. So let's read. Once I started reading, I was hooked. I'm like, wow, this is exciting. Then Do you remember started... who the bodybuilder was that was on that cover? 
Do you remember? It was Dorian Yates from Dorian United Yates, Kingdom. The great Dorian Yates, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was '97 when uh, it was his last year when he won hmm. Mr. Olympia. Then Ronnie Coleman took over. Yep. So that was good. So for me, like I've been connected to Dorian Yates and then Ronnie Coleman's journey. I've been following since. Uh, it was so exciting. You, you actually like, met Ronnie Coleman, is that right? I have, yeah. Yeah. He came for uh, to one of the supplement stores locally. Oh, and uh, he was doing signing, so I went to meet him. Oh, really nice. So he's a really nice guy. Yeah. Very pleasant. Yeah, so from there on, I went to the gym, started exercising, reading magazines, the advice they push. So I'm like, well, this is good. Initially, I made some progress, and then uh, I started taking it seriously in 99. From that point, uh, focused on my diet, focused on proper exercise program, and then I've been uh, starting seeing real progress and real muscle gains. And then uh, back a little while ago, I used to eat meat uh, mm. in the beginning. I grew a vegetarian, but then somehow I started eating meat for muscle. Yeah. So I thought you needed to feed your body meat to get big muscle. Mm. But then I did that for about 10 years. After that, um, I quit, became vegetarian. I um so that's a forward journey, which yeah. I will tell you in a second. Okay, so okay. Once I got into bodybuilding and started training, I started seeing progress. It was very exciting. I had muscle, my abs. So you're talking about your you don't you must have only been like 19, 20 years old, something like this. Yeah, I started yeah. on 19, yeah. Yeah. So a lot good progress at that time. And then uh one of my friends told me to compete in a bodybuilding show. I had no idea how to compete. Only thing I knew is a magazine people who we see these bodybuilders who were pros yeah. and they were on these magazine covers so i found a trainer to coach me for the prep i was really in a good condition uh, i could see my abs i was around 11 to 12 percent and then were, you, were doing, you lean before you started bodybuilding were you pretty lean before was, that uh, or were you more of a thick guy getting lean I was like an average guy i was in the middle i was okay. neither too thick i was not too fat or too thin yeah. I was kind of average, uh, broad shoulders, no chest really, but uh, uh, there was something there. I was just a normal looking guy. Yeah. Uh, was When I started at six feet, I was, uh, I think, 175 pounds. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty lean. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't have any abs or anything, but like I was towards the normal looking yeah. range, leaner compared to now. Were you, were you athletic otherwise? I would play some sports for fun, but like not basketball, any, soccer type of thing. No, yeah, no, no. In India, we played cricket and cricket. Uh, yeah, yeah, cricket. went to the village and in the pen, we played all the other sports and just hmm. running around, but never really played anything seriously or in a team. Okay. But just for fun. And then when I moved here, then, you know, we got busy with work and school and, you know, yeah. want to get yeah. everything right. Then I didn't have any time for sports, but uh, I took martial arts too um, oh, during okay. the beginning. Yeah. It was called Sun Hang Do. It was uh, mixed martial arts, some weapons, um, combat. And I was doing martial arts and bodybuilding at the same time. It was getting too much. I see. I would get tired because I have to give three days to martial arts. And then bodybuilding was like everyday thing. You just look yeah, forward yeah. to training every day. So then I decided to stick with bodybuilding because, you know, I could just see through properly, do it and make some progress. Right. And even with bodybuilding, people don't realize a lot of bodybuilding is your rest and recovery. It is, yeah. That's when you're Very growing. Important. That's when your muscles are developing and, and recovering yeah. so that you have energy for your next workout. So when you have an additional thing like martial arts, you're just yeah, then you're just draining your energy all the time. Yeah, it's very intense too. Like <clears throat> all the warm-ups and all mm -hmm. the forms and everything you do in the training it's uh, pretty intense so <laughs> yeah i'm like let's stick with one and then we can visit it later yeah um so after that in 2004 i competed in a bodybuilding show i found uh, it was a natural competition and one of the ladies who was but uh, in that group of uh, promoters she was a trainer and prep coach so I went to her and kind of got her to Get me dialed in. I lost uh, about, I think, 15, 10 to 15 pounds to get contest ready. Oh, I see. Uh, back then, I had a haircut. I was in the sink. Hmm. And uh, then I got into 
and then I did the show, my first show, and I won third place. Okay. And then I was excited. Then like that's oh, really good. Fun. That's actually really yeah. good. Yeah. And um, after that, like I was never really into competitive bodybuilding as much as I was into training. Mm. So to me, there was no future plan. Okay, I should compete at this next level or go to other shows. I didn't have any friends who were competing. So to me, I did one show and then I went back to training. Yeah, and you were just doing this as a hobby. It was my hobby. It was passion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you were working full time. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. And um, then after that, in two thousand five, mm. I tried to go down the dark side. I tried to use steroids because you know friends always like, "Well, you're looking good. Like you, you will look even bigger if you tried this bunch yeah. of stuff." So I tried it, and it backfired. Um, how backfired? Been, how? If you inject wrong, it hits your artery and you bleed internally. Oh, and wow. And that becomes infected. And then um, uh, it became red. So I had to go to the doctor on a Friday night. And then uh, he told me to go to hospital. It's pretty bad. So <laughs> same oh, wow. night I went to the hospital and uh, they admitted me. And then they performed surgery to get the infected blood out. And uh, so the whole year I went from, like I couldn't train. Because of the surgery, I had to get um, bandage done every day for six months. For six months? I had to go to the months? hospital. Yeah, every day. Oh <laughs> Otherwise, you would get infected. They had to clean it up and redo it. Wow. And uh, initially, sitting was a problem because it was on your glutes, right? Yeah. Uh, after that, I was slowly started training my upper body, shoulders, and arms, and then legs until a year later when I recovered. Wow. Um, before this incident, I was squatting four or five uh, for reps, eight reps without a yeah. belt or any support. So my strength was really good before. Yeah. After that, I had to start from 10 pounds. Oh, my god! And uh, never got into heavier squats. Even now, it's getting better. But before, it was uh, really good. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so that was my lesson. I'm like... <laughs> Having small muscle, less strength is okay, but I don't want to take the risk again. Oh, that's 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 incredible! I've never heard of anything like that. I've never heard such a. It happens to people. Uh, people lie a lot in bodybuilding. I see. If you see somebody who grows in muscle only, no fat, that yeah. means they're taking steroids. Probably. Or getting stronger at the same time, stronger and bigger, and not getting any fat. Yeah, and you that's, know, I'm I'm not going to judge anybody either because. Look, yeah. I'm sure like if you're doing this as your profession and you have doctors that you're working with and it's probably still not a good idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not condoning it either, but I'm yeah. just saying like, I understand to perform at a certain level, if that's yeah. what you're pursuing, you're going to have to do what everybody else is doing. And it's not just magical that you just take steroids and now yeah. you're going to win. Yeah. Right. You yeah. still have to work have work is needed. Yeah. Yeah. The work has to be there. The the genetics yeah. have to be there. The talent has to be there. The drive. All those yeah. things have to come together. Yeah. Like in professional bodybuilding, I agree. You have to take drugs, otherwise it's a waste of time. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot mm -hmm. of money to put into extra food and everything right, right. towards the competition. And um, if you're not going to win, it's uh, very disappointing. Right. I'll have friends who do it and um so with me, like, I don't have issue with people taking drugs as right. long as they don't lie about it. <laughs> right, right. Like, especially now, very few people admit to taking it. I mean, yeah, it's illegal, but you don't want to broadcast. But at the same time, don't tell claim to be natural. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, uh, is disappointing for anybody who's connected to you. When you have muscle, you get lots of followers and on, right. on social media or YouTube. And people ask you for advice and then... You know, you're taking steroids, but you're telling the guy to take BCA or creatine or protein. It's right. not going to help them right. as much. It does right. to some degree. So this is why me, I've been natural since then, since the incident. And yeah. uh, now I just uh, tell everybody not to take it. If somebody wants to take it, I'm like, I cannot help you. Find somebody else for coaching or, you know, I can give you advice on fitness or nutrition. When it comes to drugs, I don't know much. So <laughs> yeah, no. Now, scrolling through your Instagram, I saw that you had transitioned from bodybuilding to powerlifting. Now, did you compete as a powerlifter? I haven't competed yet. Um, okay. This year, I was going to compete. Actually, last year. 
Okay. But then uh, COVID hit and all the competitions were right, right. canceled. So um, after I switched to powerlifting, I got into strongman. I see. The strongman is like the top of the sport and uh, lifting sports. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's weightlifting to Olympic weightlifting and then strongman. It's yeah, like no, I, I've been a big fan of strongman for a long time. I used to watch in the 80s. With yeah, my, with my dad on TV, my brother and my dad we used to watch, um, you know, John Casimir and John yeah. Paul Sigmerson and yeah. all all these old classic strongman competitions. You do things like it's not the traditional bench press or squats. You're talking about like Atlas stones where you're picking up a heavy yeah. rock and you have to it's put it the on most a pillar. Difficult thing to lift, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. they have um, like instead of doing a regular deadlift, maybe you're deadlifting a car. Or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've done that. Too. <laughs> okay, you have. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of exciting stuff. So in 2019 uh, summertime, I discovered uh, strongman. So when you're lifting for bodybuilding, your technique is to move the weight any way possible to get the max stretch on the muscle you're training, like in the chest. Yeah. You can lift in any way as long as you got a good stretch while keeping it safe, and feel the muscle like or if you're doing yeah. biceps you could do biceps in any way where you contract the muscle and stretch when it comes in, to in with bodybuilding you also have it where um you are looking for size and symmetry yeah. not strength yeah. yeah yeah strength goes uh grows to a certain degree right. but we try to isolate everything hmm. so like i would isolate bicep from uh, my forearm i would isolate upper and lower chest same right. thing with the legs uh, everything is separated okay when you go to power lifting now if you don't do compound movements like proper deadlift or proper squat my squat was good but my deadlift i would only do romanian so you go to just below the knees and come up yeah and when you go to power lifting you got to put all the muscles together <laughs> make the body work together and tight yeah. to lift more compression you create, more strength you have. You use your joints, you use your nervous system, you use muscles, everything put together, then you lift. You could do only five, like so that's power lifting. Mm -hmm. Then you go to strong man, you the funny way to describe strong man is you try to lift things that should not be lifted and <laughs> trying not to die. <laughs> try not to die. <laughs> try not to die. <laughs> Because uh, the thing is, uh, everything is very hard, uh, odd. Yeah. Like the Atlas stones, they are very round. Yeah. There's no place to hold it. Yeah, there's no you place have to, to grip hold it. it on your forearms right. and your hand, just your fingers. So all yeah. you have is really crush your forearms in. Right. Deadlift of same weight is much easier. 315 on a deadlift is so much easier compared to 300 on a rock. Right. Okay. It's like you have to be able to pull 300 just with your arms and get it in your lap before you. Yeah. Essen essentially um, either you can't grip it or it's not a balanced as balanced yeah. as like something yeah. on a bar, like even a barbell, you're distributing the weight to the outside and yeah. you're pulling, pulling from the inside. So it's yeah, with the barbell. If, if it's uneven barbell will still move with a stone. If it's yeah. even <laughs> like see. a, inch forward it'll slip and roll forward fall. or roll yeah. back <laughs> i see okay it's uh so it's very exciting training um like in the pin growing up we did this kind of work we will pick up things we will take uh, buckets of water to the buffaloes or cows yeah. or yeah. we'll just do real work in the pin and now we come in the city it's just uh, uh, we are sedentary yeah even if you go to gym two hours a day our and you sit in the office for the rest of the time. Yeah. Our lifestyle isn't very active. It's right. very sedentary. And then yeah. obesity and everything goes up, strength goes down. So that's why we need to go to the gym and do, um, no matter which field somebody is in, they have to do these fundamental movements like squat and uh, deadlift and overhead press. Yeah. Again, bench press is fun. It's an ego lift. Yeah, yeah. How much? Bench. How much do you bench? Oh, you know, exactly. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Other than that, there's no uh, real life purpose. But overhead pressing compared to bench press is much better because one is more difficult, and second, it opens your shoulders up in this direction where you don't 
we keep our uh, arms in this level. So we pick up things, we put it down or we move arms this way, but we yeah. never raise the arm up higher overhead. I see. And because of that, we get a lot of shoulder problems, shoulder impingements. Anytime you go out of your normal range, you get trouble. So uh, the way you're talking, I mean, it sounds like you have some uh, just more knowledge about the physiology and kinesiology, like how the body's moving, the joints on. Did you actually study any of that or is this all just from your experience? Well, first, initially experience. And second, I did uh, get certified as a personal trainer. Okay. So anatomy is part of it. But then when you go more into movement and how muscles should function together, uh, like I've been training clients in the past as well. They have a knee problem. Knee problem isn't because the knee is wrong or something is wrong with the knee. It always works out to be the quad, your thigh muscles. Hmm. Either they're tight, they're disproportionate, or the hip is wrong. So I find it very fascinating that pain is in one position, but is caused, triggered by something else, maybe up your upper back yeah. or your other side of the hip. And I've had uh, several injuries too in sports at a higher level. You do get injuries, which is part of the game. Yeah. But now I'm focused more on how to prevent the things that cause injuries, get to the root and stay functional. And anybody in sport, they're going to go crazy with the lifting weights and injuries happen, which is, you know, nobody will stop that. But my focus is to how to make my body as efficient as possible. So if I go into ego lifting when I shouldn't be lifting heavy, I still try to, yeah. I'm still able to maintain my health. Uh, joints should be healthy. Yeah, what are, what are you? You're like 40, 41 right now. What are you? How old I'm are you? I'm 41. 41. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm 48. Right around okay. 43 is when it really hit me. My so the other thing that causes injury is getting older. <laughs> yeah. So I I would try well, to train. To realize, uh, yeah. the one thing you have to realize is why injury happens when you get old. Hmm. The question to ask is: Is it does injury happen because you get old, or do you get old because of another reason? Oh, that's true too. That could I mean, be age is going to go up. That's part of life. But what happens is, which we don't realize is when we start, I mean, not everybody exercises, but when we go from hard physical work on our body, where body is functioning, we have muscle. Yeah. So I'm not talking about big bodybuilding muscle, but everybody has muscle in the legs, in the back, right. arms. So just enough to support your lifestyle, whichever you're doing. If you're an office worker, you'll have those kind of muscles. If you drive a taxi, you'll have, you know, some muscles will be weaker, arms will be stronger. If you're a postman, you'll get really strong legs. You know, you'll be active. If you're working in uh, construction, then you'll be really strong overall. So muscles are maintained. As we get older, we don't have physical activity. Our muscles keep getting shorter. So as smaller the muscle more pressure goes on the joint and the muscle isn't there to support the joint. Yeah. So we have problems. And then we have imbalances from 10, 20, 30 years of past life. Yeah. yeah. That shows up at the end. And then you're like, oh, my back hurts. We don't figure out why back hurts, which there's always an imbalance that cause, causes pain or some issue unless you have a, an accident, something's broken. Yeah, if everything yeah. is normal, there is some form of imbalance and our body adapts. So yeah. My physiotherapy friend uh, told me, he's a physiotherapist, he said, when you get injuries, so I always talk to him about neck injuries and back injuries, which are most common. Uh, why does it happen or what happens? Like we were discussing that. So let's say your back is like this. And something happens in your mid back, so it'll pull your body in from one side. Right. If you try to stretch it out, it's going to cause pain. But if you do this, you'll be fine. So your body and nervous system adapts your body to this position when you should be like that. Right. And now and your body is it's getting worse and worse over time. Then because now it's going to keep being in the it's wrong position. Balanced. Yeah, and now yeah. other parts of your body are going to be off because if your back is 
a little bit yeah. like that, then what's going to happen with your hips? What's going to happen to your knees? Exactly. And also tissue grows, like body has fat deposits in that area to support that position. I see. And then it becomes permanent. And if you try to stretch or do something wherever it goes up, it's going to cause a problem, whether in your upper back or shoulder, I lower see. back. Sciatica problems can be fixed with exercise and proper training. Um, yeah. Doctors usually don't care to, you know, see through the recovery. Yeah, yeah. They just want to give you drugs. Yeah. Some <laughs> physiotherapists care, but um, uh, usually uh, if you're into training, you're able to live pain-free a little bit longer. Yeah. So what I found is it was right around 43 and I don't know why 43 and not 40 or 45 or whatever, Yeah. but right around 43, I saw that I was not recovering the way I used to. So I would, uh, I do, I, when I train, I do a typical like bodybuilder type, yeah. you know, Mondays is back, Tuesday is okay. chest, yep. Wednesday is legs, Thursday shoulders and Fridays I do arms and I take Saturday, Sunday off. Okay. So I would notice that I'm not a hundred percent recovering. And even yeah. uh, now I'm going to shoulder day, even though I did chest on Tuesday, Wednesday is legs. So it's kind of a rest for upper body. Yeah. Thursday, I would do my shoulders and my shoulders were all of a sudden I'm starting to have shoulder pain, you know, okay. and then, then I'd have to take off. I can't do those exercises. Now I'm not, now I'm trying to rest one week or two weeks, recover. Yeah. And then you go back to the gym and then you feel like you're starting all over again. Yeah. You know, that's a very frustrating feeling. Like I just actually, for me, you, you, you already hit on it a little bit. So um, last year I bought this rogue fitness um, power rack and set okay. it up in my basement. That was January. Yeah. I bought it because yeah. I thought, yeah, you know what? I'm, I want to start training at home. You know, I did CrossFit several years ago uh, okay. for a little while. Uh, ended up hurting my back doing that because <laughs> you, you know you're doing with CrossFit. You're doing reps and you're doing them. You're yeah, doing them as you're getting tired. It's a very dangerous type of thing unless yeah, you're that's really. That's the fit. most dangerous part of CrossFit is uh, Olympic weightlifting. Mm -hmm. You do for reps yep. and time. Yeah, yeah. It's you end up like trying to rush and not like it. That's like right after powerlifting is the hardest sport after yeah. powerlifting, where you have to make sure everything is in line, your positioning is correct, and you start and then you catch the bar properly, stand up, take your time. Yeah, no, and the thing is, my <laughs> ego got in the way because I knew what I could deadlift before, you know, from yeah. when I was in college. I I know how strong I am, but then. Um, when you're putting on the bar, you know, for something like CrossFit, yeah, you got to, you can't just keep slapping the plates on thinking, oh, I know I can do this. I can do this because yeah, it's different, yeah. third then round, fourth round, then now your body's weak and it's easy to get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. With powerlifting is like another thing I kind of dislike about powerlifting is you're moving your weights in a very small range of motion. Hmm. Deadlift also, you try to fish, make it as efficient as possible where you move the weight least amount and then you lock out quickly. I see, yeah. By You know, that's why people do sumo. Sumo is easier because yeah. you're wider and the weight is closer to you and you lock on much quicker. And um, so same thing with squat. Squat is a full movement where you start from the top, you go down and stand up. So I prefer, like squat better than others. Yeah. Uh, deadlift easy. Bench press again, you try to... Instead right. of going up here, you try to bring your arms down, body up. So you're right. arching your weight. Some of the girls look like one of those witches from the movie, the scary movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they are the bent bodies, so hard, yeah. it's very scary. It's like, right. did you even move the bar? It moves right. like three inches. And um, so that's what it is. In strong men, it's the is completely opposite. It's level playing field. You pick up the weight, you do your distance, and yeah. you come back and drop it. And so that's why it's very hard at the same time. It's challenging too. Right. Like obviously even in strongman, you want to be efficient in your movement so that you, yeah. Know, yeah. So you don't get tired, but there's no getting around it. There's no, no. like your, your technique is not going to beat strength. Yeah. In, in strongman. 50, yeah. 50 yards is 50 yards. Yeah, you throw yeah. a pound on your chest, like a sandbag. Yeah. It crushes you. You can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, I was saying about how I got that power rack. Okay. So I used it a few times. And then what ended up happening was I went on in February last year, 
we went on yeah. this camping trip with my, two of my friends. We went to Death Valley in California, we went to Vegas and then went to Death Valley, stayed in Death Valley, camped out there. And it was a great trip. But that was right when uh, we were watching on the news, COVID is coming, you know, it's happened yeah. in China. There hadn't been any U.S. cases yet. Yeah. But we were all talking about it when we were there. That was mid-February. Yeah. Then uh, I got back from that and I got really sick. And I, okay. I was for sure that I had COVID because I was okay. having trouble breathing. I was using humidifier. I was taking an inhaler. Mm-hmm. I was taking other medicines. <clears throat> and I was doing whatever I could. And I was very, very sick for about two weeks. And then I recovered. And then everything shut down. So now I couldn't yeah, go back suddenly, to the gym. Yeah. yeah, everything. And now in my business, um, real estate, we were completely shut down too. We couldn't yeah. show houses. We couldn't go on appointments. I couldn't. Mm-hmm. I, I do a lot of investing, like flipping houses. Even yeah. those guys, they couldn't go to the job. So I would sit at the computer. Literally, I wake up in the morning. I started playing with stock market. I would. I yeah. started doing all my taxes. I was yeah. doing all the loan applications, and every yeah. day for months, 14, 15, 16 hours, just sitting in my office. Yeah. And I actually, uh, I lost weight during all that time. I I went from okay. about two o eight, two o nine to two o four. Yeah. So I dropped okay, like five. Good. Yeah. So Most I dropped. People gain weight while you're sitting there, eat a donut or chips or whatever. Well, I, it wasn't good weight that I lost because okay. um, even my wife would make fun of me. She goes, why, why are your legs so skinny? <laughs> like what happened? <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm just sitting, literally, I'm just sitting all day, you yeah. know? So everything just went away. Um, yeah. And just recently, you know, about three weeks now, I started working out again. So every morning I get up, I got my routine. I'm back. Yeah in my gym in the basement and I've been back on track, feel good, starting to move, you know, but that happened to me with the COVID, just like you were saying, like we're sedentary, we're not yeah. moving. And yeah. it did, it, it gave me a lot of problems. Actually. I actually even went and saw the doctor. I was like, you know, I'm not feeling good. And he's like, yeah, you, well, you haven't been moving for nine months. You, yeah. You've been uh, sitting in your, time, yeah. you know? So then I started feeling like, okay, I got to, do this again. And it's been a huge, huge difference. I mean, my appetite is coming back. My energy levels, you would think that I'm exercising more. I'm putting this effort that I'm going to have low energy, but actually it's the opposite. I'm having more energy now. Yeah. Funny thing is uh, us like lifting community thinks lifting is only way to move. But even if you go for a walk or you don't even have to jog, just walking or going in the trails and nature walking in nature if you can. Yeah. That's also something for your body. Your body moves, the legs are moving. And then something to do with the upper body you can do push ups or doing something, jumping jacks right. or another. Safe if you kind of, uh, the joints are okay, jumping jacks are a pretty good choice to do. And then my favorite is burpees, and everybody hates them. <laughs> burpees, oh man, <laughs> that's your favorite. <laughs> it can never go wrong with them. I don't do them much, but <laughs> I make my clients do it and they hate oh, it. <laughs> that's why that's why you love burpees because you make other people <laughs> <get> do it <laughs> and you get to watch them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I don't mean to imply that you know, just lifting weights. Actually, that's how I started too. I started yeah. by just walking on the treadmill. And even even now, every morning I wake up, I even tell myself, okay, it doesn't matter if you do any workout, just walk, get on the treadmill, yeah. and just walk, and then see how you feel. And then usually I'm feeling good by then. And I think, okay, let me just do another workout. But yeah, I, our circulation improves very quickly and we get more oxygen to all the blood cells, blood goes through and, uh, you know, you feel better just because of that. And if you're able to have fresh air while doing it, that's even better. So do you train mostly like people that are athletes or are trying to get to a certain thing? Or is it just average person that wants to get in shape? Do you work with any elderly people? Like what is the range of your clients? Uh, clients are like we, I haven't had any elderly client, but mostly they are, uh, I think 45 is a max I've trained. I've trained a few elderly people here and there, but not uh, long-term. Yeah. Okay. Mostly for weight loss. Most common training uh, client is weight loss client. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ladies more than men. Sure. Men also want to look good and put on some muscle, but uh, 80% of clients are going to be weight loss clients. I see. 
and then 10 to 20 percent uh generally muscle gaining clients and then a very few people are were into bodybuilding i don't do bodybuilding prep but uh, generally strength and conditioning uh and uh, overall bodybuilding type training mixed with strength training i see that's what i do so um one of the things I also saw on your Instagram, and yeah, I was stalking you. If any, people are going to be like, man, why is he paying so much attention? You, a lot of interesting things, because this has been one of my great dreams is to own and run a gym. Yeah. And for me personally, I don't, I don't really want it to be a business because yeah. I, I love it so much. I would just, I want to just, I don't care if everybody works out for free. Yeah. I just want to be there every day, talk to yeah. everybody, see them training, go train myself. Yeah. And when I saw that you also are a gym owner, uh, plat- what is it? Platinum Fitness? Platinum, it- yeah. Platinum yeah. Athletic Club, yeah. Athletic Club. Platinum yeah. Athletic Club. How did you How did you make that transition to gym mm-hmm. owner? And you know what drove you to do that? Did you always want to own your own gym? Um, I was looking to buy a gym back in 2013. Hmm. Um, because like I was bodybuilding and I've won a few shows in the past and um, it was a good transition. I had lots of uh, people following me for fitness advice. And uh, so it was a good next step in business because like our community, most of us are businessmen. Our family has been investing in homes for longest time. Okay. So to me, business uh, gym is like a passion and business at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So um we get excited about training, but at the same time, we have to think about business. Um, then I started looking into opening a bigger gym, but not a smaller studio. Uh, okay. wanted a gym that has employees and staff. It kind of runs on its own without me being there at all times. Yeah. Um, when I looked into it and the rent was so high, like 20000 to 30000 a month, oh, then wow. other expenses, I'm like, if I put that much money in the bank, even the basic bank interest will be more than yeah. what I would make. Um, so then I kind of stopped smaller places. It wouldn't be that good for business because you kind of have too many employees. Yeah. Now, small place gym, too. You end up with more, it's like a boutique shop. You're going to be dealing directly with your uh, customers more. And it's probably going to be more time consuming actually for you as the gym. Yeah, I mean, if that becomes a private studio, then you have your own clients. It's yeah. good. The rent isn't so high. Yeah. There's no overhead. It's just you or some cleaners. Other than that, there's no right. staff. So smaller gyms are like that where you do strongman and uh, powerlifting type training is yeah. more smaller communities or CrossFit. Yeah. But commercial gym is a different beast. So this gym I've been going to for about 20 years now. I started initially and then I've been here most of the time. Okay. And um, so I'm kind of passionate about the gym. I know everybody. It's like my second home. Right. I met my wife also there. So there's another oh, really? attachment to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> so that was more emotional choice. When I was looking at the numbers, it's like the biggest facility in our town. In Canada, gyms are not that big like you have in the States. Yeah. But this one is similar to like not as big, but it's about 30, 22,000 square feet. And then there's a second level as well. Oh, I see. Okay. So I was like talking to the gym owners and uh, giving advice how to improve the gym because gym was deteriorating. Um, I liked the gym to stay open. Right. So they were started talking. Then they started talking to me into partnership or me working for them. I see. I don't like the idea of a job because once you <laughs> quit the job, work on your own, <laughs> it's like, why do I go back, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Then I started negotiations with uh, being a third partner. When I looked at the numbers of wanting to need some loan and uh, all the banks wouldn't give you loan because one third share is you don't have any voting power. I you have no control. So then I asked them to go into 50%. They agree with 50%, then uh, slowly negotiations went into full. Oh, wow. So one third investment is this much, half is here. Full is nah, like, yeah. Now, it was, was, it, was it actually easier to get the loan then because you were going to buy the gym 100%? They wouldn't give a commercial loan. I still had to take money on the house. Oh, I see. And then I okay. had to, my family invested some money and uh, one of my friends gave me 
extra 75 grand. Um, so I made it work. And then when I bought the business, they wanted a security deposit, which is 40 grand more. Yeah. So you like, you cashed everything out to get that money. And now there's more. Yeah. But luckily I had some cards and uh, line of credit. So I made it work. And then. So when did it. you, when did, when did you purchase the gym? I purchased it just the time you were getting sick last year. Oh, wow. February, just, just before yeah. COVID. End of February. I got it on March 1st, pretty much. And then 18 days later, I had to close it. Oh, my God. It was pretty bad. So that was a stressful time. But uh, luckily, I managed to go through. The times we were closed, I still had to pay rent. Um, so March rent was already paid because the first when we opened. Yeah, yep. And then April was tough, but I went into the line of credit with my account and paid that off. And then uh, next month, I moved it forward to future months. And then by then, government started supporting and I was able to get some support. So financially, it was pretty, it was lost months when we were closed. Half March, April, May. Now, were, we you, st were you still maintaining the place? Like you still had to maintain everything like? I, I guess things aren't getting that dirty or messy, but you know, is that a yeah, time that you use to kind of fix things, little things up or. Yeah. Yeah. We, I started make uh, doing renovations before. So there okay. were lots of improvements. Uh, washrooms were upgraded. Um, when we were closed, me and a bunch of friends started training because training alone in a huge gym is weird. Like <laughs> you would want, like I have whole gym to myself, but when there's nobody, you can play any music you want. It's a very big place and it's very eerie. Yeah. And uh, so you don't have any motivation to train then alone. Then I asked a bunch of my friends to come train with me. And then we would train and then we would rearrange the gym to look better, look more aesthetic. So we spent like two months doing that. Oh, wow. Like I would arrange it one way and then... It's a big space and we have lots of machines. And uh, yeah. it was a lot of work. Then we four or five guys started training there and uh, it's a huge gym so it was safe to train in covid yeah um, but at the same time we would work and uh, reset the whole gym so we got that done during the closure time yeah um so it wouldn't get dirty as much so cleaners would come and clean uh, once or twice which was needed yeah other than that it was um air conditioning was working before then i had to turn it off it was like closed doors. There was yeah. nothing happening inside it. Now, did you did you quit your job to open the gym? Or? I wasn't uh, working a job before. I was uh, doing personal training and marketing. Okay. Independent clients. So I was easily able so to So how long had you been doing that? I've been training for a long time since uh, I would say... 2007-8. Oh, okay. Yeah. And before that, I would give advice, but I wouldn't charge anybody. Yeah. So yeah. since I've been in bodybuilding, I've been helping people out. Then I started officially training. And uh, uh, yeah, so that was going on while I was working. I see. And uh, so I was doing my uh, IT-related jobs back then in the office. So with my last job, I got fired from after that. I'm like, I'm going to get a camera, create my YouTube channel the same day. Yeah. I had planned it before I knew I was getting fired. <laughs> yeah. Friday, I came back, went to the store, got a DSLR camera. Then I started, you know, my own YouTube channel. Right, right. I didn't make it big. Um, I have some uh, fitness advice on it, the recipes, vegetarian recipes on it. Uh, because of that, I have some followers, not a big channel. Um, in between, after 2014, 15, I didn't have so much time to create videos and content. So I just kind of mm. stopped right there. It's good to start, but it's hard to find time and do useful videos. Before, like all fitness channels about this is how you do chest uh, routines on different body parts or what yeah. training uh, to do. Now that is more common knowledge to me. I didn't want to just be another channel, another right. guy saying the same thing. No, no, that makes sense. 
yeah to to share some useful information you need to take lo- longer time to make a video explain things uh so my focus has always been on natural and vegetarian strength and yeah. muscle gain uh most people in our community don't know how to do that yeah so speaking of that so vegetarian bodybuilding the biggest concern that comes up for people is how you're going to get enough protein yeah so so how how do you deal with something like that so in uh, in our first world countries we're lucky that we have lots of options so Indian diet, diet, we have dals and we have paneer, more protein, some fat comes with it too. Dal is the best choice for everybody because dal has your protein, 15 grams per cup. It has fiber in it. It has carbs. And you add some butter, desi ki to it. It becomes like a complete meal. And then you eat roti or bread with it. Mm. You, you're set. Um, besides that, if somebody who is into bodybuilding, they would need to add more. They need to so add more. Have, okay. Yeah. More protein. Protein, right? yeah. Because the muscles need more protein to grow. So in our countries, we're able to get soy-based foods. So I'm not a fan of overly processed burger patties because the protein content isn't as much. It would have 11 grams of protein and then 16 to 18 grams of carbs. Right. It's not a bad thing, but when you're trying to you get carbs from every other food, so there's no need to add more carbs to already high carb diet. That's the biggest for challenge protein. for vegetarians, right? It's because yeah. um, what happens is you end up uh, eating a lot of French fries and potatoes and and fruits. Yeah, I mean, you're eating a lot of food. Fr- <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of junk food. Actually, that's the biggest problem. You end up eating a lot of junk food because you're hungry and you need to fill yeah. up, and then now you're eating a lot of sugars and carbs and and yeah, so if somebody's listening, uh, if um, if you want to have a balanced meal, like roti is one meal, roti with uh, dal. Hmm. So all the beans and legumes like dals, rajma, chole, uh, black beans, or any of the bean family oh. uh, foods, those. The sabjis don't have much in it. Like if you have gobi or gajra or all the greens, it has some fiber and some nutrition. But when we cook it, it's gone. So you have very less nutrition left. Mm-hmm. All it is is carbs and fiber, right? That's good, but then you have too much carbs. Okay. So when you have dals, you have carbs and fiber and more protein. So that's one way. And then you eat dahi with it, yogurt, it's yep. got probiotics in it and it's got more protein. Mm-hmm. As long as you eat enough according to your needs, you will be fine. When we start eating more, Instead of four or TIP, go eight. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a problem. Some yeah. people like dying so much, then they have a big bowl full of it. Right. That will make you fat too, because if it's not Greek yogurt, it's going to have additional fat and sugar in it. So, okay. which we need to avoid if you want to stay lean. Now, do you which recommend I, adding any like whey protein or anything to the dolls or to any of the other? Yeah, I was food? getting to that. Um, okay. Right. So this is like a normal food. Like we have to separate normal people and then athletes or okay. gym people. Okay. So for normal people, they don't need too much protein. Right? What we need, we can get from these foods. I see. And okay. then we have nuts. Nuts come with fat and extra carbs. So you can get really high calories from nuts if you're not careful. So one cup of nuts could have up to 800 calories. Oh, wow. You don't get yeah. 20 grams of protein, but lots of Okay. Fat and carbs, which is it's healthy, a lot of fat. but yeah, yeah. too much will make you fat. Right. Now, then other option is tofu, of course. Tofu can be made like sabzi, it can be grilled. It doesn't have too much fat and carbs. It uh, For a brick of tofu, you can, uh, I think, get 50 to 60 grams of carbs easy. Okay. And then you can cook it like sabzi, you can scramble it, you can put it in wraps. So you can make a meal out of it. And after these main things, then there's patties. You can have patties if they are made with lower carbs. Mm. Then it becomes more processed food. Then you have to see like health versus right, right. macros, right? <laughs> so that's a decision we have to make. Bodybuilding is nice. You look nice and you look lean, but it's not always the healthiest way to live. I see. Yeah. Uh, but those are decisions you have to make when you're eating food. Right, right. 
So then there's Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt's got a lot of uh, protein, very less sugar, and almost no fat. That's now, what now what, what you... about like when they, when people make it at home um, versus buying like from the store? That's the same. So there's normal thing, then there's Greek yogurt. Greek okay. yogurt is pretty much all the extra sugar and fat removed. Then it becomes very thick and more protein left in it. Okay. Normal okay. thing is okay too for normal people. And even like if you want to lose weight, Greek yogurt, if you try to eat normally, it's it's not as appetizing. Normal yogurt tastes much better. I see. Again, because of sugar and fat. In it. Yeah, yeah. It has more of a sour taste to it or something. Yeah. yeah. And then and, uh, we also have cottage cheese. I was going to ask you about also, cottage cheese. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite things to eat. Like now I'm, I'm on two extremes. I'm either eating pizza or <laughs> cottage <laughs> cheese with uh, I mix cottage, uh, the dry cottage cheese, uh, half a cup could give you about 22 grams of protein okay, and yeah. only two grams of carbs, almost no fat. Right. So that's the lean diet. It has no taste. So I add hot sauce, I add salt to it, mix it up and eat like that or add some uh, uh, corn to it. Frozen corn and boil it and mix it together. So add some sweet and then additional fiber. Yeah, a lot of people add fruit to it. Like, yeah, uh, fruit works too. Peaches, pineapple, things like that. Yeah. With me, uh, I made this controversial post in the past against fruits Uh for people who want to lose weight. So, again, uh, so if you're okay with your weight is in normal range and you're not, you know, worried about gaining weight, then adding fruits is okay. Those who are looking to lose weight, I would say don't eat fruits, eat vegetables for your nutrients and have normal carbs. Like if you're going to have the right type of bread, um, sprouted grain bread has six grams of protein per slice and less carbs and extra fiber. So adding these kind of foods where you feel normal is better than eating fruits. Okay. You got to pick your carbs the right way. And uh, you maintain your sanity. If you quit all the carbs, you're going to have problems. Right. If right. you go very low on carbs, you will quit your diet very quickly. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with Stan Efferding. He's a, yeah. yeah. He yeah, always says uh, compliance is the science. You have to pick, <laughs> you have to pick the kind of, uh, di- not diet meaning like dieting, but your the food choices you make, they have to be things that you can stick to it. Yeah. If you're going too strict on any program, you're not going to, yeah. everything works if you can stick yeah. to it. That's exactly. his point, right? So pick pick something that you can actually stick to and you will follow. Yeah. And then that will give you the most benefit. Exactly. I always say, ask people, what's the best diet? <laughs> yeah. The diet you can follow. Yes. If you don't yeah. follow it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a temporary thing. Then you're going to quit. Yeah. Um, like before I would tell people to go on this bodybuilding type diets or my clients. And then I realized they would follow it for a week or three days, Right. maybe two weeks. Then they binge yeah. go opposite extreme right after. Yeah. So that is very hard for, no, for non gym people. It's very hard to follow even gym people. Yeah. I was going to say, even like a body, it's yeah. not that it's easy for them, but they're so focused on their goal yeah. that everything they put in their mouth, they're thinking constantly, what is my goal? Yeah. And that's why they're, that's why they're able to do it. Yeah. Normal people aren't going to think normal people no. are like, Oh, I'm so hungry. I need to eat I mean, before my next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Even gym people uh, develop insulin problems insulin sensitivity problems were hmm. like me too when i went from bodybuilding diet to normal eating weight gained right i'm not hmm. concerned about now having abs all the time like i did yeah. before so now belly came up some fat gain because of that so that will happen but right. at the same time then you get so stressed in bodybuilding like a little bit of fat and then you feel judged because your bodybuilding is about yeah, judging. Yeah, they are judging. Yeah, And then somebody will say, oh, you got softer. Oh my God, you have abs. Oh, your muscles yeah. are shorter. Like you guys so sensitive over these comments. Yeah. When you leave that behind, then you're like, that was very silly. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so that causes mental issues too. Mentally, you feel sure. very weak and always, you know, feeling you have to justify everything. 
Well, no, and, and then it also can make put you into a certain type of doubt about yourself because then you think, oh, I am not strong enough to stick to it. I am not, yeah. you know, and then you start to have this self-doubt and there's a, it's like a negative feedback loop in your mind. Yeah. So you have that to be really careful. It's body bodybuilding itself. You know, I'm a huge fan of bodybuilding. I've been following yeah. it for a long time. Yeah. You know, I used to go to school every day. I used to have Muscle and Fitness magazine with me every yeah. day at school. And Lee Haney, Rich Gaspari, all these guys I used to follow them. Or obviously yeah. Arnold. I read Arnold's Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding maybe four or five times since high school. Yeah. You know, and I follow all these guys, but you know, I always thought it's hard to be in that mentality because it's so self-focused. Yeah. And in Sikhi, we're always telling ourselves that let your it's ego go. Yeah, yeah, you let your ego go. Don't yeah. be so self-focused. Don't be self-centered. But really, yeah. bodybuilding is a very self-centered sport because it's really you versus you. Yeah. Right? You you are the person you have to be. So you have to look exactly. in that mirror and yeah. see where where is this and what do I need to do? Okay, I got to do this. Yeah. And then if you make mistakes, oh, I'm a failure. I didn't do this right. I didn't yeah. do that, right? When we're doing bodybuilding, we can't always have our mom or the wife cooking for us. Mm. We are either cooking food, right. shopping for food, eating food or training or thinking about food. <laughs> so <laughs> right. the whole right. day is revolve around food and training, right. which is not bad if you're competing. But uh, if you're not into professional bodybuilding, that's not your goal. Everybody should compete at least once just to experience. Hmm. Even if it's not going on stage, you should aspire to have a six pack, a muscle body. So like do like do like a whole um, contest prep? Like a fake prep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Like That's... set a goal, let's say six months to a year. Yeah. And then take the whole time to prepare your body. So, you know, if you give yourself more time, like a year, yeah. Some people give four months. Four months is a very intense period. You lo lose a lot of muscle. But if you give yourself a year, you can slowly lose fat and you can add muscle at the same time. Yeah. And when you get to the last uh, few months, last two months, you can up your game, increase your cardio, cut the carbs, uh, maintain the carbs accordingly to get to that level where you see abs. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's easy to achieve. It takes work, but it's doable for everybody without drugs and, uh, you know, going insanely dependent on supplements Yeah, in a healthy way. Now, you had mentioned earlier, and I, I wanted to get into this with you, too. Um, you had mentioned earlier that when you did the bodybuilding competition uh, at that time, you were cut hair. And yeah. then since then, you have kept your. So before I go too far into it. Um, what made you change your mind about your hair? What got you back into your Sikhis group and what happened? Um, it was like, uh, I did two competitions as a haircut and then I did two, I won third place in those. Yeah. And uh, then I got into a bad marriage where things were bad and I got into depression. Um, like bodybuilding was my passion. I quit. Hmm. I'm like, this is... Like muscle is like has no meaning to in real life if you think about it philosophically. Mm. It's nice, it's a sport, but in life, does it really help you? No. Right. To me, it was just ego boosting thing. It's like I have this, let's say a Ferrari, you know, I can show yeah. off. Yeah. For bodybuilders, it's our body, we show off. Like this is our thing that gives us respect and status. So I'm like, uh, when you go into depression, then you start thinking. When you start thinking, you're like, well, what's the point of this It's not getting me anything in life. I'm miserable. Mm. And um, like before I would go to Gurdwara normally once in a while, like do seva sometimes listen to Kirtan or functions. But then like I was at a point where life had no meaning and suicide was one option. But then I thought suicide is stupid because life is a gift. Mm. And I never drank or did drugs in my life. So I wasn't going to turn to that. The only option left was Ardas. So mm. I prayed and did Ardas. I somehow went to the Gurdwara at like 3.30 in the morning or something. Amrit then, Villa. You went to Gurdwara at Amrit Villa and did Ardas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ardas was happening, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Guru heard and then brought me to Gurdwara. So then I went and Gurdwara is opening at 4 o'clock where they um, do Sukha. I mean, Prakash. Um, uh. Prakash. And then uh, they started with... Um, Nitnim. 
Mm. So to me, I'm like, well, this is nice. Let's go, right? Yeah. So I mean, Gurdwara, we're always passionate about it, even though we don't do strict seva. Yeah. So it's always a fun place to be. And uh, so I went there and started listening to part. So that gave me some peace. I'm like, well, this is good. And I was bill. I had no job. I couldn't, mm. a lot of debt and like all the stress going on and no hope. And I was free. There was nothing else to do for me. Yeah. So I'm like, this is great. I'll come here, do some seva, listen to part. And uh, then one day I was doing seva. I started going every day because it was beautiful, nice way to start the day. Mm. And uh, then one of the sevadars said, uh, why don't you start reading, doing Nithanem at home? I started at, at that time, My when I started reading Jabji Sabi, it took me a long time. Mm. And other barnies were like, I kind of got lazy and didn't do it. Is this so this then, is like early 2000s maybe? This is around uh, 2012. Oh, okay. So like yeah. mid, okay, 2012. Around 11, 12. Okay. And uh, then I started like, like I did part before once in a while, but not like properly. Yeah. Then, so one day I came to Gurdwar and then Gandhiji was doing part. So I got a poti and opened it up and started reading. Yeah. Uh, so I was reading again. It was speaking. So like I learned how to. Ah, right, right. Properly. You're you're reading and listening at the same time. And so it's yeah. almost like you're getting Santhya in a way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's how I learned. Like Jabji Sahib was easy. Jab Sahib was really hard. Mm. So it was hard. Um, Chopai Sahib is easy. Anand Sahib is easy. But when you read and then you kind of know where to stop and uh, Santhya vi ho jandi and then I learned it too. So you know, and, and interesting, so interestingly enough, it just popped in my head as you were saying that uh, nitname is a lot like bodybuilding. It is, yeah. There's lots of uh, right? correlations, like similarities. Yeah. Like the, the consistency, the, yeah. the focus, the consistency, and then it's like ingraining. You know, it, it, when you think about even Sikhi, we talk about like you have to, uh, Sikhi has to be uh, what you eat, breathe, sleep. Right. Yeah. Why guru always said, when you think about it, that's what bodybuilders do, right? Every yeah. like you said, you're uh, training, you're eating, you're cooking, you're shopping, you're, your whole mentality, yeah. everything is revolving around that. Yeah. So everything you eat, breathe, sleep is bodybuilding. Same yeah. thing. You were now doing this with your nickname yeah. every day, and it's building just like yeah. bodybuilding. Every day a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, yeah. a little bit better. Yeah, like before, like I was like a normal guy. I wasn't a mean or a bad person. I had a little bit of ego of muscle. After that, I kind of let it go and got fat, mm. right? In the two, three year period. And um, so with with going to Gurdwar, I got into the right mindset. Mm. I was able to finish off the issues and... Uh, got divorced and then got free and then started going to my gurdwara was every day since then yeah and uh, so i would listen to part i would go do seva as much as i can i could do uh, then i found a job uh, started working um, at the same time in 2012 i decided to compete because uh, i had given up gym completely at that time i'm yeah. like seva is good like god is the only purpose of life everything else is useless and so I was so focused and then uh, two sevadars came up to me they like teach me they were my friends so they would like, joke around and, like some yeah. gym like a job yeah and I look at me I look like crap uh, they were like we know just go let's go so they brought me back to the gym mm. so to me I saw it as a lesson that God wants me to share what I know, what I learned over time with people. Right. And um, so I came back to the gym and then I started to decide to compete again. Okay, with competition, you're going to be on stage. You have to get in shape. So yeah. I didn't win that show, but the, my victory was that I went with a pug on, put a khanda on, and then as a singer, I competed. Yeah. So that was my accomplishment. Wow. Um, wow. That's great. And then I competed one more time after in 2013, didn't place in it. Uh, after that, I kind of didn't 
So wait, 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 real quick. When you were competing, you said you're about six foot tall. You were competing yeah. at about what? 180, 185. What, what was it? Um, it was a light heavyweight category up to cap is at 197. Okay. The first in 2012, I competed in uh, around 184, I think. Wow. Okay. That's pretty lean. It was around that, like, because I wasn't in shape. I lost a lot of muscle. There was still some fat around my, I wasn't uh, bodybuilding stage ready. Okay. It was like, it looked really nice. Lot of abs it was, and it was a huge comeback. It just wasn't, yeah. it wasn't yeah, perfect so bodybuilding. It was more yet. of a comeback than yeah. competing. Yeah. But uh, I was still able to represent Siki and yeah, only sing. I haven't, there's a lot of things competing now, but at that yeah. time there weren't many. So that yeah. was uh, exciting to represent yeah. our people. Yeah. And then after that, I kind of um, took it easy and uh, I didn't have any drive to do anything. Once, if you have a competition, that's your drive that drives you. Yeah. If you have ego, that also drives you. I want to look good. I cannot have fat. When you mentally, like, I change so much. Like in Punjabi language, we used to swear, like, Gala uh, and then right. English language, we don't even care. <laughs> So right. me and my friend, when I was getting ready for 2012 show, we were like, uh, his name is Mandar. Mm. It's yeah. not right. It's It sounds bad. Especially mm. Punjabi is really bad. Mm. From that day, we're doing cardio. We stopped completely. Oh, wow. And every just we decided and just stopped. Just like yeah. uh, meat, I gave up one day in 2008. I'm like, I'm going to quit. That's it. Mm. Uh, so in 2008, I was working in a nightclub used to like regularly as a weekend hobby and it was like being around party and getting paid for it. Right, right. Uh, then I was like, this is a very bad environment to be in. Mm. Not very positive. Then I quit one day, then I quit meat. And the same New Year's Eve of 2008, I started going to Gurdwara for New Year's party. Mm. Instead Before of going to I party, like, you would go Gurdwara. Yeah. Like New York, like Gurdwara is the busiest place on New Year's, right? Mm -hmm. uh, before that, we find parties to attend, right? Which yeah. is kind of a stupid thing to do. Yeah. I mean, you know. No, but so this, this, this shows, though, that you had some kind of, like, something inside of you was drawn this way all along. Yeah. I mean, because we know, like, Sikhi path is a right way to live life. Hmm. We just get lazy. We get comfortable. We yeah, but see, you're in Surrey. So much you're in that. Surrey. You have so many gurdwaras and people and sangat yeah. and all those kinds of. See, like we don't have that. Like growing up, I grew yeah. up in Beaver Creek, Ohio, and yeah. you know there was only few families. And then we originally we used to do gurdwara like twice a year. Okay. Only twice a year. The Vasaki yeah. and Guru Naidev is a good group they used to do program. Okay. And they would invite Ragis from outside and we would just rent a place and attend. Yeah, then, that would be tough. Yeah. After 84, we so we were all cut hair family, everything before yeah. 84. After 84, we got into Sikhi. We started learning Nitne, Mikirtan, and okay. all these things. Then we started doing the Gurdwara ourselves. And we used to do it twice a month. And then eventually I think we were doing it every weekend. Okay. But but it, again, we had a small building, you know, it's just yeah. small community and we didn't have anybody. It was just me and my friends. Yeah. Uh, we've supported and our parents were supportive, but like, like our parents, like my father didn't keep his hair initially. He also kept yeah. it later. Um, you know, and then some of our other friends, their parents didn't keep their hair, but the kids, we were keeping hair and then we were yeah. together. Right. But uh, it, it, it wasn't, we had to make so much effort. We had to go to Toronto, drive eight hours to attend yeah. a big Gurdwara or a big Kirtan Smagam, or we'd have to yeah. drive. I live in Detroit now, but at the time yeah. we used to drive to Detroit to attend a camp for one okay. week. And that's when we would see other six. Otherwise we yeah. never would see any other sick. So you guys Were are even more lots of Indian people in Ohio? No, 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 no. Uh, actually you... my, my school, um, I think, gosh, there was, handful of Indians, a couple of black people, and everybody else was white. Yeah. So that's how my school was. Beaver Creek, Ohio. Uh, look, it was a fun Is it childhood. Like a small uh, town? Yeah. Well, it's not really a small town, small town, but it had that small town feel. Like these okay. are successful people. There was an Air Force base close by. That's where my dad okay. worked. So all the okay. families, they worked at the base mostly or some industry that supported the base. Okay. Um, but so they were well 
upper middle class or upper middle class, but it was all, you know, cowboy boots, muscle cars, Def Def Leppard t-shirts. You know, that's the kind of, that's, that's how everybody dressed. That's how I dressed. Did you, did you face a lot of racism back then? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, the things that we dealt with growing up, like we talk about sometimes we're like all these, this new generation, they're very soft. They have no idea. <laughs> they have no idea. I am I mean, almost daily, somebody used to call me Gandhi, okay, which didn't make any sense at all. Gandhi was a Gandhi? short, yeah, Gandhi, they were, hey, Gandhi, <laughs> you know, and it's like, Gandhi, he's a little bald man. <laughs> I, I, I didn't understand, but it was just anything to make fun. I even yeah. had a teacher one time, I wasn't paying attention, and my teacher said, hey, Towelhead, I'm talking to you. And I was oh, like, oh, right. oh, sorry, Mr. Clay. Uh, were you uh I Were you wearing a pug at that time? Yeah, so eighth grade, I started wearing a pug. Okay. So I was 14. I must have been 14, I think, when I started wearing a pug. Yeah. Um, that was the first year I kept my hair, you know. And, and, you know, for a teacher to say that today, they would get fun. Oh, yeah. He said it then. I didn't even think anything of it. I didn't even think it was anything wrong. I was just like, oh, yeah. sorry. You know, I felt a little embarrassed that I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. So, yeah, everything was totally different back then yeah. i was very lucky that um i never really got into any fights um i i had started so actually this is how i got into weightlifting <clears throat> in ninth grade so i similar to a lot of things you were saying what happened with me was first of all i started wearing my bug i had gotten into sikinu i was fascinated with the the sick warriors the history you know the yeah. gut gun things like that and i thought you know i want to be like tough guy you know and i'm watching all the arnold movies and stallone and all these guys and i'm looking at magazines and i started taking martial arts so i was taking kempo we were doing kempo was a mixture of kung fu karate kind of thing yeah um and then i started lifting weights ninth grade i started lifting weights and i remember uh the summer after ninth grade so before so our school was middle school was ninth grade or sixth grade to or seventh grade to ninth grade so yeah. seven, eight, nine was middle school and high school was 10, 11, 12. So okay. after I graduated the middle school, um, before we started 10th grade, I spent that summer lifting really hard. I, I was okay. reading Arnold's book. I started doing yeah. everything. And I remember at 15, I bench pressed 205. Oh, wow, so I, that's I, amazing. Yeah. So I broke nice the 200, 200 number. And I yeah. couldn't believe it. I was so excited. I was bragging to everybody. I, I, and uh, that changed everything. Because now 10th grade, I come into school and I was almost as strong as all the strongest guys. Yeah. So we had a weightlifting class and we had a gym with full weights because it was yeah. big on football and things like this. Yeah. And I was lifting everything, whatever they were lifting. I could do the same or more. And even guys that were yeah. bigger than me. Yeah. So I started getting a lot of respect from that. I mean, people yeah. still made fun. They still made their jokes, but they were now, I was also making jokes back, Yeah. you know, and then they were accepting me more because they were like, yeah. oh, they, oh, he's actually strong. Well, I want yeah. him to spot me. I don't trust yeah. this guy. Yeah. I want him to, you know, <laughs> so there was a lot of that. And uh, that's, that was what got me uh, really into yeah. weightlifting. And uh, you probably don't know, but my nickname, everybody calls me Ricky. Uh, and uh, so I had a poster I made Rick's gym uh, okay. and I had it on my wall and it, yeah. it took like the gold gym guy, but I put the star and a okay. sunglasses nice, on him, nice, yeah. you know? So I was like, uh, I was like, okay, this is my dream. I'm going to have, and I, my dad would let me buy um, all the equipment. He bought me calf yeah. race machine. He bought me pull down bar. He let yeah. me buy a new bench. So my basement was already filling up with all this equipment. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to the gym. And even that I got very lucky because uh, at the time there was a gym called Muscle World Gym in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Larry Pacifico. He was like a nine time world powerlifting champion. It was okay. his gym. And uh, he took a liking to me, you know, like we would talk and stuff. Yeah. And then I, started helping him with his, uh, he had a newsletter he was doing and I had, yeah. I could do these things on the computer. Yeah. So I started helping him with the newsletter and, and he gave me, you know, uh, work, the chance to work out very discounted price. Yeah. But his gym was a 
old school, hardcore bodybuilders and powerlifters. Yeah. I mean, you know, these guys will blow your mind. And I remember training in that environment, it pushes yeah. you. Oh, yeah. And I remember the first time I used, I had 90 pound dumbbells. I had done it on the incline bench press. So I, okay. my partner was with me and Larry Pacifico saw me training yeah. that way. And he, when I put the dumbbells down, he came over and he said, he goes, wow, you, you know, you've made a lot of, he goes, that was actually very strong, good yeah. form, you know, good job. Yeah. And I was just on top <laughs> of the world. I was like, Oh my God, Larry Pacifico told me <laughs> I did a good job. Yeah. You know, so that was, that was kind of, so that was all of high school. And then yeah. uh, once I got into college, I was, I moved to Columbus, Ohio. I was at Ohio state. I trained yeah. at world. There was a world gym right behind my apartment. Okay. So I used to, I used to train there. And um, that's when, that's kind of when I really got serious about, um, you know, the consistency of it and all that stuff. Yeah. But I've always, I've never was into bodybuilding. Like I was trying to get ripped right. I've always had, yeah. you know, a little bit of a gut. I was in much better mm -hmm. shape then than I yeah. am now, but um, I wasn't, I didn't, I would, I didn't get that much stronger though. It wasn't yeah. until I would say early to mid two thousands when I was working already. Yeah. Um, I had gained some weight. I was now up to about two eighteen or so. I'm only five yeah. eight. I'm five eight, so two eighteen is okay. is pretty heavy for me. Um, but at that time is when I got really strong. My muscles had matured. I was yeah. I, I was you know mid thirties, you know, and um, I I was able to bench press. I could rep three fifteen for about three reps. Yeah. That was the strongest I'd ever been. Well, that's really you know? good. <laughs> yeah, and even my my squat was never that great. Um, yeah. I don't think I ever got under anything more than 365. Uh, yeah. you know, and then, uh, deadlift, I never did like a one rep max for deadlift, yeah. but you know, I could do 315, you know, and yeah. so I was pretty strong and even dumb, I was doing dumbbell shoulder presses, um, uh, with nineties. Yeah. You know, and I could, I could control them. I could, you know, it wasn't just yeah. crazy all over the place. So I had a lot of power and strength, but I was never like yeah. a ripped bodybuilder type. Yeah. You know, I never, I never went down that track. And part of it is just because I like to eat. I like to eat too much. Yeah. So. Well, this is why it's good to be around uh, somebody who's competing, hmm. even though you're not competing, that company rubs off. Same yeah. this Sangat, right? Yeah, if yeah. somebody's into Gurbani, they, they will take you to Gurdwara. Somebody's into partying, <laughs> you're gonna have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Partying. And then somebody's into training and eating right, they will guide you. Yeah. You will do more of that. So that's why it's important to be around somebody who's on that goal which you want. Even like if you want to get a ripped body now, you can easily do it within uh, six months to a year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, muscles you know, I, won't grow super big, but if see, that was really the other wanting... thing too, I think for me, um, because of how early I had started with weightlifting, you got to understand yeah. too, first of all, in the late eighties, early nineties, there were very few, um, Amritari, Kesadari six in that age of that age yeah. that we knew you, you know, around yeah, all yeah. of America. Yeah. And then on top of that, I was strong and lifting weights. So a lot of people, we would go to these camps and they had never seen anybody like me, you know, like a yeah. and like lifting weights, you know, and yeah. with big muscles and stuff. So I kind of built my reputation early. That's then good, then yeah. more and more people started getting into it. Now people are amazing. I, I look at some of these people. I'm like, God, I wish I had this kind of, you know, group when I was younger. Or I had yeah. this resources that, you know, like, look at, look at all the info. Like I saw your stuff. I was watching yeah. you do your axle bar deadlift. Yeah. And I was like, man, I, nobody even told me what axle bar is. I would have never yeah. even tried it. You know, I'm like to have this kind of resource and to have people like this around, it would have been amazing yeah. for me. I would, have, I would, I think I would have thrived. Like you're saying, you know, they could yeah. have influence. Even strongman gyms are not very common. Powerlifting gyms are, more common everywhere hmm. in our town there's only one like half an hour away it's like a nearby city i can go to that gym too yeah but i didn't know about it until like i knew about this new gym that opened up close to yeah. where i am I so see. i could then i joined right away and started training 
Because so Stormman training is fun. Bodybuilding is all about reps and, you know, it gets boring after a while. Yeah. But Stormman training is like one day you're flipping a tire that's 450, 600 pounds. Yeah. There's an 865 pound tire too, which is very challenging to push up. Yeah. Um, but it takes a different type of movement. Again, like putting the whole body into it. Yeah. Which is, which is what makes you realize uh, that you need to have your whole body working as a system and working right. in a healthy way. Because right. going from bodybuilding to any strength sport is going to cause injuries because bodybuilding is always go hard, max weights every time for reps. Yeah. Right. You cannot do that with powerlifting. Powerlifting goes in waves. Like you got to have your max or estimated max and then work with percentages. You go up, you hit your max training weight, then you start again. Oh, I see. Deload. So that's how you gain strength. Bodybuilding attitude is like you, okay, I'll lift three plates and okay, let's try three and at 25. There's yeah. no three and a quarter on each side. <laughs> right, right. You go but in powerlifting, powerlifting, you will actually try to go up half a pound. Yeah. Yeah. You have plates like you're half a pound. It's like my bench is pretty weak. I haven't hit 315 yet. Because mm. um, bodybuilding, it was always less than two plates. I never went yeah. heavy. Now I was, I'm able to do two plates for seven reps and 281 is my max still. Okay. Um, so again, there's some imbalances in my back from mixed grip deadlifting. So I did yeah. that for like 15 years. Now I switched to overhand hook grip. Like yeah. where you hold the bar like that. Right. It's really uh, bad on your thumb initially. Yeah, you're going to smash painful. your thumb. <laughs> But after a while now, even my max deadlift is 505, which goes up. I don't notice my thumbs then. It's yeah. just in the bar. Yeah. Again, like there was so much change that needed to be done from bodybuilding to powerlifting. That uh, everything changed like before. So do you have plans to compete in strongman or are you just? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So where, where are we going to be expecting to see you? Is there, well, first you, local you have shows. to do local show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Then you qualify for a province yeah. or state level. Yeah. Then you go to nationals. Yeah. And after nationals, I guess American shows are bigger. Uh, then there's the world strongest man, which is at yeah. the top. Yeah. Level. So I'm going to keep getting stronger. Yeah. I'm not sure if I will go to world strongest man because everybody takes drugs and I don't want to take drugs. Yeah, and those, but, are, those are, a lot of those guys are really big. Yeah. I mean, they have a Everybody's lot of weight. Tall, like, uh, yeah. I have gained weight. Like, I finished uh, extra bulking cycle now. I got a belly now, too. Yeah. <clears throat> but with, with powerlifting, belly is a good thing because when you brace, you push the stomach out, which is opposite of bodybuilding. I see. <laughs> yeah. Bodybuilding always sucking in. Here, you're, even without the belt, you have to push, push. the your abs out to create a compression around your spine, which helps you lifting. I see. Uh, so yeah, so with Strongman, uh, I'm competing in a event uh, in October. It's a worldwide event. You go to local gyms and you put do a video. I see. And uh, it's with Axel Deadlift. Axel Deadlift is with the fat bar, which is 1.9 inch thick. It's yeah. hard to grip it, so you need straps. And then it's at 18 inches. It goes just below your knee. Yeah, but even so, still, like axle, the axle bar, not only is it really thick and hard to grip, it doesn't spin. The weights don't spin on the end, right? So if the weight the spins on you. the bar doesn't whip either. Oh, okay. No whip. It's stiff bar. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, so, so it's, it's much more difficult yeah. to hold on to it. Yeah, same level rack pulls. I'm able to, I did 555 last year. Yeah. I haven't tested recently, but I think six, seven months ago. But starting from Excel, I went up to 525 yesterday and uh, it was harder. 555 yeah. went easier. I was able to do reps in a day. I see. But this one was a real grinder set. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it's, again, like it's Strongman is challenging. So Axel Deadlift is one event. And second event is log press. So you did the big log, you yep. stand up from the ground and then you 
overhead. You gotta press. do like a shoulder press. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, one thing I noticed, and I wanted to ask you about this. I'm sure it has a lot to do with the regulations now with your gym open, but I've noticed in your videos, you're, you you are wearing a mask when yeah. you train. How do you yeah. feel about that? How do you feel about wearing the mask and does it affect you? I don't you like when it. Yeah. Um, in our, um, in Canada, you have to wear mask inside now, but for training, you could remove it. Now, our gym is very busy in a day. We would have total 500 people going in and out. Oh, wow. At a time, we have 85. So it gets packed. And uh, I just went a little bit extra on precautions to keep the mask on while training. Okay. Because if I make the rule where people can take a mask off while training, they will keep it off and they'll go work, get some water, drink, walk around. Yeah. They forget. And um, we had an outbreak at the gym. So okay. we, we had 42 cases connected to the gym and then authorities shut us down in November. I see. So be, because of that, we had to make some changes in the gym physically with moving machines apart, taking some equipment off the floor, closing it. And um, it was tough. So we were closed for 18 days. So they came and did a second inspection and they were happy. And then we opened again. Okay. So to me, I, from business perspective, gym close is uh, very bad financially. So right, right. having extra precaution um, because of that gyms, like, you know, obviously financially, no business is really booming. Some businesses are. Yeah. So to me, it's, uh, I'm happy that gym is open at least and we're able to come in and train without the risk. Yeah. Lots of people are also afraid of COVID. Typical bodybuilder doesn't care about COVID. They were like, I want my weights. I want to train hard. Yeah. That's it. But the majority of people are concerned. So we had to make sure our protocols are good and, uh, you know, mask is on. And our other gym I go to, Strongman Training Gym, they also have mask you know, implied, uh, yeah. mandatory mask when they're training. So it's not the best. I mean, when you're doing lots of reps or more intense, then it gets hard. Yeah. So, you know, you just um, take a mask off for 10 seconds, breathe, and then put it back on. Okay. Yeah. And plus, I guess when you're the owner of the gym, it's such a good example. Yeah. You know, you, nobody yeah. can say, well, well, look at him. Yeah. He's putting on Instagram that he's wearing. He doesn't have his mask. So yeah. at least, you know, you're setting a good example this way. Yeah. Initially, it was very hard to make people comply. Uh, members, some members have canceled, some have put their account on hold because yeah. of that. Uh, people don't like wearing masks while training. Well, it is, it's very hard to breathe, right? I mean, yeah, it's it's not healthy either, but you know, it's we gotta it's required. do the yeah. best we can and at least be able to train, then you know, train freely. Yeah, but the way I see is it's like elevation training with restricted oxygen. By the time <laughs> yeah. you over, you True. go back to training, your yeah. intensity will go up. And yeah, yeah, when all this is done, we're gonna be goes up. yeah, we'll be able to work out much easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hopefully soon uh, restrictions will be over. I heard in uh, Texas and Miami they took away the mask completely and they opened completely back to normal. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, I'm not sure that that's a smart move uh i don't know if, what we're going to see happen from that but you know we yeah. have the vaccines now um yeah. things are moving along so maybe it won't maybe it won't be so bad hopefully it won't be and they'll be okay yeah but sadly it, the government doesn't see gyms as important business to open yeah you know i think that's a so, mistake though because it is yeah be, being healthy working out boosts your immune system yeah. you know flat out there's no doubt about this there's nothing yeah. you know there's no debating this we know yeah. that exercise boosts your immune system yeah. and this is a good way yes we understand that we don't want too many people close together but if people are following example like you did where you separate the machines and you're following yeah. protocols that's what you, that's what if that's what we have to do that's what we do there's yeah. no sense in shutting things down don't yeah. shut it down just give us yeah. the rules and we'll all just adapt and then we can keep things going i think that yeah. makes the most sense yeah yeah. yeah, so I'm happy gym is open and uh, everybody's able to train. Um, Business-wise, uh, it's doing okay, not losing too much money. So yeah. it's just kind of cruising along. But once yeah. things start getting back to normal, mask comes off, then uh, it'll be better. 
No, well, I, look, me, I have no doubt. I think your gym yeah. is going to do amazing. You've, you, I mean, you've already expressed how much uh, passion and enthusiasm you've had for this particular gym that you've been yeah. going to for all these years. Plus you're doing the, the strongman competition. That's going to bring yeah. a lot of attention. As yeah. soon as this vaccine is out there, CDC is already now here saying that if, if you're vaccinated and other are vaccinated, you can now mingle without mask. Yeah. So they started yeah. saying that here. So it's just a matter of time. And I, I really, really hope your business just booms. I think what you're doing is amazing. I enjoy following you. Uh, yeah. And I, I was so happy when you said that you would come on. I thought I was going to have to convince you and keep bugging you. But you right yeah. away, you were like, yeah, I would come. And I yeah. was like, oh, great. This is great. Because I, I really wanted to talk to you. And I do appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Yeah, I like uh, connecting with others. And um, the power of... Uh, youtube or podcast is it reaches a lot of people yeah and uh, sometimes people just don't know where to start although there's lots of resources sometimes it's just the words of encouragement gives the other person motivation to start yeah. which is amazing to me it's um, you know if uh, my words make a difference in someone's life to me that's good i don't need to know it but uh, at least somebody's going doing better in their life and i like seeing that yeah, and I'm definitely recommending people follow at Coach Romy Gill on Instagram, or and I'll I'll, yeah. I'll link all your social media and and whatever links you want. I'll I'll link that into the description. Um, but uh, thank you so much for coming on. Um, You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Let's let's do this again in the future, especially once things open up again. I would love yeah. to hear how things are going. We can have some focused uh, talks about strength or bodybuilding, any topic. I would, I would love that. I think that and, would be great. Uh, I would like to share that. And uh, if you'd like to include some videos from my post, we can add that as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just send me whatever and I'll put that in. But yeah, I, I that's actually a great idea. Maybe um, maybe in a future episode, we can talk specifically like about strength training. And then yeah. maybe we can talk about some other things, but strength training, I, I am really interested in because I really feel like um, that's lacking in our community. Yeah. And especially with uh, older people, like even like my parents, I often think like they should be doing some basic resistance work. It's good for your bone density. Yeah. It's good for your you know muscle and stuff like that. So there yeah. may be things like that, that can be explored and, and talked about that just don't get talked yeah. about. Nobody's talking about it. So. Yeah. Yeah, we should encourage everybody to yeah. train. <laughs> yep. Okay, well, thank you so much for spending time with me today on Net Nihung's Arena. Um, anytime you want to come back, sounds great. And if you're ever in the Detroit area, let me know. Uh, you got a place sure, to stay. You got yeah. a place to work out. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was really good meeting you. It was really good talking to you. And I uh, hope to see Same you soon. Same here. It's an honor. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Why would you call us? Why would you call us?